Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about Young's inequality. I'll state it and then I'll get on to a proof of the inequality. Okay, so suppose P and Q are positive numbers which satisfy 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals 1. And we also have A and B positive numbers as well. Then A times B is less than or equal to 1 over P times A to the P plus 1 over Q times B to the Q. Okay, so that's uh, Young's inequality and then I'll get on to a proof for it. But if you want to try and prove it yourself, I've written down a hint here, sort of a starting point, uh, to see if you can prove it yourself. So the hint is this. Consider the function f from the non-negative reals to the reals, uh, which maps x to the point 1 over p times x to the p minus x plus 1 over q. OK, so I'm going to be using this hint, in fact, to prove Young's inequality. <laughs> OK, so here's a proof. Remember, we have this function here, f of x equals 1 over p times x to the p minus x plus 1 over q. The first thing I'm going to do is differentiate it. So I get f prime of x is equal to this thing differentiated, gives me x to the p minus 1 and minus 1. And of course, the constant term vanishes. And this is for non-negative real x. OK, now let's look at where the, the f prime is 0, so the roots of f prime. Now, firstly, let's make a note... Uh, let's note that p must be bigger than 1. Why is that the case? Well, if p were to be less than or equal to 1, then that would mean that 1 over p would be at least 1. But because q is positive, we know 1 over q is strictly greater than 0. So if uh, p were less than or equal to 1, then 1 over p plus 1 over q would be some number strictly greater than 1. But that contradicts this thing here. So we know p must be uh, strictly greater than 1. OK, so then that means that the only root to this thing here is x equals 1. So in other words, f prime of 1 equals 0, and f prime of x everywhere else is not 0. OK, um, now let's consider the second derivative of f, and we're going to look at it at x equals 1. So the second derivative is just p minus 1 times x to the p minus 2, but in particular, the second derivative at 1 is just p minus 1. OK, and remember p is bigger than 1, so this thing here is positive. So that tells us that the, the uh, uh, x equals 1, we have a minimum turning point. OK, so that means that every point on, um, every, uh, every non-negative x value, sorry, is at least uh, this thing here, at least f of 1. OK, so we can conclude that f of x is strictly greater, oh sorry, is weakly greater than or equal to f of 1. Well, what is f of 1? Let's just plug it into this thing here. It's 1 over p minus 1 plus 1 over q. But remember, 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1, so this thing here is just 0. So in other words, f is a non-negative function. Now, we're going to use this inequality here to get uh, Young's inequality by choosing the right input. OK, so you may be wondering uh, which input we put into our f to show that, or to derive uh, Young's inequality. And so you play about with a few inputs and you realise that this is the special one. I, must, I think I'm a special one. Um, the reason for uh, that is, well, let's plug it in and we'll see, I guess. Uh, but firstly, what are we plugging in? x equals a divided by b to the power of q over p. And now firstly, I'm going to make an observation about q over p. Um, let's look back at this thing here. We know 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1. So what I'm going to do is multiply through by minus q. So I get minus q over p plus 1 is equal to minus q. So that means that minus q over p is equal to minus 1 minus q. Ah, sorry, this is supposed, it's supposed to be minus on there uh, because I'm multiplying through by minus q. Um, so then if I add 1 to both sides, I get that minus q over p is 1 minus q. OK, now this thing here is a times b to the minus q over p. And because uh, what I've just sort of derived, I can write this as a times b to the 1 minus q. A times b to the 1 minus q. OK? Now we want to plug this thing in here. Perhaps um, uh, fiddle about, do some multiplying and stuff. But essentially using the inequality we just derived. And hopefully we should end up with Young's inequality. OK? So let's plug this in. So we get f of this thing here. That's going to equal 1 over p. Now remember... We're plugging in this thing here, but this thing here is the same as this thing here. So x to the p is this thing here to the p. So that's just a to the p divided by b to the q, because on the denominator, 
the P's will cancel. Okay, and then we've got minus X, and X is just this thing here, A times B to the 1 minus Q. And then we've got the plus 1 over Q there. And remember, we know that this thing here is strictly bigger than F of 1, which we showed was 0. Okay, now this thing here is A to the P times B to the minus Q. Like so. And we've got b to the minus q there, so it makes sense to try, <clears throat> to try and multiply through by b to the q. And then you can see that we're going to get a b to the q divided by 1 over q, which is sort of what we want. Remember, we're working towards this thing here, so that helps in sort of uh, choosing what to multiply through by and stuff like that. Okay, so let's multiply through by b to the q. So here we get 1 over p times a to the p minus a times b, because that thing there is b times b to the minus q, and I'm multiplying through by b to the q. And then I've got plus b to the q over q, and that's greater than or equal to zero. And now it's just a very simple uh, thing of adding a b to both sides, and I get oh, Young's inequality. Okay, so adding a b to both sides, and sort of bringing this side onto the left hand side, a b is less than or equal to 1 over p a to the p plus 1 over q b to the q. And that is the end of the proof. Um, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this quick proof. A uh, quite uh, neat use of calculus to derive this inequality. Um, you know, if P and Q perhaps we insisted were natural numbers or integers or something, maybe we could do some sort of inductive argument, I'm not sure. Uh, but we can use calculus, and I guess the difficult thing was firstly getting what f of x was, but I gave that as a hint, and then choosing what our input was. But if you have a bit of a play around with certain inputs, and you know what you're trying to work towards, uh, you can get the result quite quickly. Anyway, that's uh, today's, video is done. today's video done. If you are new here, please do consider subscribing. I make lots of fun maths videos and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.